Pythagoras, born in 570 BC on the island of Samos, he was a contemporary of Pharisees and was brought up in a culture of Ionian philosophy, which was heavily influenced by Homer and Hesiod. His contemporary, Pharisees the Syrian, founded the Illusiani Mysteries, which would later be the influence on Christianity as well as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and Neoplatonic religions. Pythagoras founded the School of Italy, known as the Pythagorean School. Most of his philosophy is still taught today, and his math is still used today as well. Pythagorean theorem is a popular way to do calculus and algebra. At some point in his youth, he left the country and traveled to Egypt, on which occasion Polycrates gave him a letter of introduction to Amasis, and he learned the Egyptian language, as Antiphon tells us, in his treatise on those men who have become conspicuous for virtue. He also associated with the Chaldeans and the Magi through his contemporary Pharisees the Syrian. His philosophy began to shape the Hellenistic world before Alexander paved the way. Alexander, who was taught by Aristotle, was also taught by Plato, who was also taught by Socrates, and Socrates, being a contemporary of Epicurus and Democritus, followers of the Pythagorean philosophy. In a long story short, Pythagoras' philosophy shaped Western philosophy. When he was in Egypt, he entered into the holiest parts of their temples and learned all the most secret mysteries that relate to their gods. Then he returned again to Samos, and finding his country under the absolute dominion of Polycrates, he set sail and fled to Croton in Italy. Having given laws to the Italians, which were at the time were divided into tribes, the Latins, the Etruscans, he gained a very high reputation there, together with his followers, who were about 300 in number, and governed the Republic in the most excellent manner, and set the stage for the Roman Republic. His teachers were known as symbols. Members took a vow of silence that they would not reveal these symbols to non-members. Those who did not obey the laws of the community were expelled, sometimes even killed. Some of these mystery teachings are still around today in the form of Freemasonry, Rosicrucians, and others like the Theosophical Society. He got all these ideas of the Brotherhood from Egypt, which also he saw in Babylon as well. Heracleides of Pontus says that he was accustomed to speak of himself in this manner, that he had formerly been to athletes and had been accounted to the son of Hermes, and that Hermes had desired him to select any gift he pleased except immortality. Accordingly, he had requested that, whether living or dead, he might preserve the memory of what had happened to him. While therefore he was alive, he recalled everything, and when he was dead, he remained the same memory. At a subsequent period, he passed into Euphorus and was wounded by Menelaus. While he was in Euphorus, he used to say that he had formerly been an athelite, and that he received a gift from Hermes, the perpetual transmigration of the soul, and passing into whatever plants or animals it pleased. And he had also received the gift of recollecting all that his soul had suffered in hate, and when sufferings too are endured by the rest of the souls. Pythagoras did not leave behind a single book, but they talk foolishly of Heraclitus, a natural philosopher. Speaks plainly enough of him saying, Pythagoras, the son of Menasarchus, practiced inquiry beyond all other men in making selections from these writings. He thus formed a wisdom of his own, an extensive learning and cutting art. Thus he speaks because Pythagoras, in the beginning of his treatise on nature, writes in the following manner by the air which I breathe and the water which I drink, 
I will not endure to be blamed on account of this disclosure. There are many examples of Pythagoras' life being mythicized. For example, some accounts say that he was able to talk with animals, and they were able to talk back to him and he can communicate with them, and that none, no animals were scared of him, he would come up to him and even go on his shoulder. Birds would fly up to him, cattle would, would yield his callings, snakes wouldn't bite him. It is even said that he was robbed when he was on a boat. He was taken as a slave, but even his slaveholders were so drawn to his nature and his aura that they had to let him go and treat him well. Pythagoras is known for his writing the Golden Verses, which are as follows. First, honor the immortal gods as the law demands. Reverence thy oath, then illustrious heroes. Venerate divinities under the earth. Do rites performing, then honor your parents and all your kindred. Among others, the most virtuous thy friend. The highest duty is honor of self. Let justice be practiced, in other words, as deeds. He also wrote 75 maxims on what to do in your life. They're basically like a book of Proverbs. First one being, go not beyond the balance. Transgress not justice. Two, sit not down on the bushel. Do not loaf on your job. Three, tear not pieces the crown. Do not be a joy killer. These are the Proverbs that lead up to what is called the Pythagorean Y. Pythagorean Y is a symbol showing the two different paths of life. Towards the left, there's the slothful way, which leads to falling into the fire. And then to the right, there's the way of hard work, which leads to having your own throne. The Pythagorean letter, two-way spread, shows the two paths in which the man's life is led. The right-hand track the sacred virtue tends. Though steep and rough at first, it rests and ends. The other broad and smooth from its crown. On rocks the travelers tumble down. He who to virtue by harsh toils aspires. Subducing pains, worth and renown acquires. But who seeks slothful luxury and flies? The labor of great acts, dishonor and die. He's also accredited for the sentences of Sextus, which are short ethical sayings. Number one. To neglect things of the smallest consequence is not the least thing in human life. Number two, the sage and despiser of wealth most resemble God. Number three, do not investigate the name of God because you will not find it, for everything called by name receives its appellation, from which is more worthy than itself, so that if one person that calls on another that hears, who is it therefore? who has given a name to God. The word God is not a name of his, but an indication of what we conceive of him. Number four, God is light, incapable of receiving its opposite. There's 104 of these, and they are the ones who have shaped Ionian philosophy. He's said to have episodes where he would rapture travel places, where he would completely disappear in one spot, and appear miles into another spot, like teleportation. It's hard to tell which of these are true, which of these are myth, but there are a lot of different things subscribed to him as far as mathematics, philosophy, geometry, even Democritus, the man who came up with atomic theory, ascribes most of his ideas to Pythagoras, so he might be the most important man that ever lived in the West. His contemporary, Pharisees from the Syrian, is also noted sometimes as one of the seven sages of Greece. The seven sages of Greece live a century before Pythagoras and Pharisees, which Pythagoras learned from, and from that he passed down to Socrates and Plato, and the rest is history.
Another belief attributed to Pythagoras is the harmony of the spheres, which maintain that the planets and stars move according to mathematical equations, which correspond to musical notes and thus produce an audible symphony. According to Pomphrey, Pythagoras taught that seven muses were actually the seven planets singing together. In his philosophical dialogue, Proceptus, Aristotle has literally double say. When Pythagoras was asked why humans exist, he said, to observe the heavens, and he used the claim that he himself was an observer of nature, and it was for the sake that this, this passed over into the light. He also taught a communal lifestyle and vegetarianism, similar to what we see with the Qumran community in first century Israel. He lived to about 75 years old. By the time of his death, 470 BC, Xenophanes was a young boy at 8 years old, who some people consider his successor. Xenophanes would make a big part in transitioning from the Pythagoreans to the Socrateans. And that'll be the top for another video. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon if you like that. And uh, I'll catch you next time.